Good morning, everyone. It was great to see so many hands that went up when Duncan asked, is this your first Wi-Fi design day? If this is your first Wi-Fi design day, I actually, I want you to all just give me a little cheer. If this is your first Wi-Fi design day. Woo! Woo! Okay. Now, if you're sitting next to somebody who just gave us a very good cheer, it is your responsibility during the breaks today, go and introduce yourself to that person, make them feel warm and welcome, because this, like Duncan said, is an amazing community. So, whilst everyone's just getting uh, sat down and settled, yeah, there's a couple, there's a seat, seat over here. So, now that we're, we're all in, we're all settled, uh, very first presentation that we are going to be doing today is going to be uh, what's new and cool at Ekehau. Uh, but Mac, maybe you could uh, give us a, a little bit of an um, intro. Absolutely. So guys, you probably know us, uh, Matt and Mac. We are both directors of Ekehau University, ECSE and product marketing. We are absolutely delighted to be here. We hope that you are as delighted as both of us and everyone that has put this event together. I just wanted to emphasize again, it's very important, guys, not only to learn new technical stuff, but to network with each other. If you network, if you get to know more people, you will be earning more money in the future. So let's do that together, okay? And what is it Duncan said about that social media hashtag? Let's take a selfie with everyone and then we'll post it on social media. Come on, you've got a longer arm than me. Uh, but do you have a phone? Yes, of course. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Of course I've got a phone. Everyone feel free to smile, pull a funny face, whatever you, whatever you like. Let's try and get as many people in as possible. Okay, I will do just that then. I think I have everyone. So, smile, stupid face. Matt, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> Very well timed. Very well timed sneeze. Beautiful. All right. Well, we'll put this on social media. Do the hashtag. If you're doing the same thing around, make sure you use the hashtag and everyone can get involved and see what's going on. Um, okay. Uh, so, guys, we appreciate that seeing the hands that you put up as this is your first event, you might not know what Eka How is about. So, very, very shortly, how is the suite of tools that is required, that's all that is required to do as spotless Wi-Fi designs, uh, validations, reporting, collaborating with your, other with your other team members. So you don't need anything else. And it's that simple to use. And it's getting simpler with every single iteration. In the center, well, on the left-hand side, we have our main software called the Ekahau AI Pro, and you can do everything with that software. You can do a design, you can go to the site with your laptop and do a survey if you want to carry a massive laptop. You have Ekahau Sidekick 2 on the right-hand side, and that's the centerpiece of everything that we do, okay? You connect Ekahau Sidekick 2 to your laptop, to your mobile device, to your phone, to your tablet, to whatever you have, and you use that device, the purpose-built device, just for Wi-Fi, to get the information from the air about, about Wi-Fi. So you have Wi-Fi cards, you have spectrum analyzer, so you'll see not only Wi-Fi, but also wireless stuff, and it's extremely accurate and high quality. And then if you want to use your mobile devices, if you want to have access to Ekahau Cloud, if you want to, uh, to have access to extended maintenance and support, then you can add Ekahau Connect subscription that connects everything together. And that is, my friends, Ekahau. And this presentation, we didn't want to make it too dry or boring. That is why we just have, I don't know, like six slides, perhaps maybe five. Mm. And everything that we are about to do is just the live, live demos. So if you ask anybody that does public speaking or presenting, what is going to be the thing that keeps you up at night, that worries you most about your presentation? And I can probably guarantee everyone is going to say live demos. Well, this whole presentation that we're doing is live demos. So what can go wrong here? Yeah, thank you, man. We will, we will find out. So it's, um, if you're brand new to Ekahau, AI Pro, and other features, we're going to take you through some of the ones that you may be aware of, may not be aware of, what we think is really cool, really helpful for your workflows, uh, and really powerful. So, Mac, how about we start off with the, uh, the very first one? Totally. So, guys, we will be covering things that may not be well known for Ekahau users, even if you are new, remember about this thing because they will just make your workflow faster, better for you, okay, and your clients. So first, let's start with keyboard shortcuts. I'm not sure if you knew that, but let's say that I zoom in, I move somewhere, and I want to go back to zoom to fit. It's just a command with left arrow, for example. By the way, you don't have to remember it. Next slide will show you the shortcuts. Or, now I'm in a design space. This is where, surprise, I can design Wi-Fi networks, but if I want to go to inspect to check my, to validate my survey data, I just hit number two. If I want to go back to design, I can hit back number one 
and I will be back in a design, use, uh, design space. So that's as simple as this. Let's not dwell too much on it. You will see the full uh, shortcuts in the next slide, but it's very, very fast and more efficient for you to use those shortcuts. Next on the list is Channel Planner. So uh, you might have seen already, we're looking at a validation file inside of Echohow AI Pro. So this is where we're looking at data that has been captured with uh, Echohow Sidekick and either our survey app or using your laptop. But we can see that this is a survey file because we see those green survey paths. Um, and what we see now is actually all of the orange icons, these are the customer's wireless access points that we have found. Echohow has automatically placed them on the map for us and we can see um, that they are there and what channels that they are currently using. The white icons are other devices that we discovered when we were doing our validation survey. So these are other devices that are currently um, in the environment that don't belong to the customer's infrastructure. Uh, one of the tools that we have with Echohow AI Pro is something that's called our channel planner tool. And I think what most people think that you have to use the channel planner tool for is for designs. When you're creating a new predictive model and you're building out your design, that's when you use a channel planner. That's not the case because actually we can run a channel planner on a validation survey file. And you might notice here that the customer's access points, the orange AP icons, the channels that they're using, it's not a single channel architecture, by the way, I promise, especially not on 2.4 gigahertz. But what you may notice is that most of the customer's access points is actually using channel one. Does anyone notice anything about the five gigahertz channels that are currently in use? So it's channel 48, 44, 44, 40, 44, Uni one band. Is it good or would you change anything? <laughs> yeah, you, so the customer, the customer in this environment, they're just using the uni one band. And I think my favorite access point here is this one down here. So this access point is using currently channel 36. And when you see the at sign and 80, this means it's using an 80 megahertz wide channel. So on five gigahertz, this access point is using the full uni one band for its five gigahertz channels. And when we take a look at, let's say that like co-channel interference, we can see that there's high co-channel interference in this environment because of them only using the uni one band of five gigahertz. The coverage from the access points in this environment is actually very good. Um, and the problem isn't with primary or secondary coverage, it's with their channel plan. So Mac, if you wouldn't mind doing me the honors of opening up our channel plan at all. Absolutely, just a first check. Let's ask Ekahau if it's a good or bad uh, network against our requirements. Uh, if I hit network health, <laughs> <laughs> it's not too happy, is it? Okay, so let's go back to the channel interference. And there we go. So we have our channel planner tool, which if you've not seen this before, what this is going to do is going to look at your access points in your environment, and then you can choose some configuration options for what channels you'd want to use. So on 2.4 gigahertz, we obviously always want to stick to 1, 6, and 11. Uh, on 5 gigahertz, we have the option to choose all of the 5 gigahertz channels. At the moment, they'd only selected the first uni one band to use, but we're going to use as many channels as we can on 5 gigahertz. And then you can choose the bandwidth, so 20 megahertz wide, 40, 80, or 160. So you choose your preference, and then you simply will hit create. And when, what Echohow AI Pro is going to do for you is going to come up with a new channel plan. And hopefully, our poor performing wireless network goes from being red everywhere to green everywhere from simply coming up with a new channel plan. There we go. So we can there see we now it looks, sli looks slightly better just from running a new channel plan. So one of the things we wanted to point out is that you can run a channel planner not just on your design files, but also on your validation files. Exactly that. What's okay, that? guys, next on the list is the wall calibration. No, the multiple AP notes. Oh, multi-AP notes. Multiple AP notes, because you, we did, <laughs> someone's got to keep them in check, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, other, the other devices that we saw here, these white icons, do you want to have a guess, anybody, what you think these may have been in the environment? Printers, okay, very good, very good crowd. Indeed they are. So they were actually the printers that have their Wi-Fi enabled. Um, when we spoke to the customer, they said that when they deployed the printers, actually they did disable the Wi-Fi radios on the printers because they didn't need to have them on. They're connected via a corporate LAN cable, so the users, they don't connect, disconnect from the corporate wireless network and then go and connect to direct HP hyphen blah, 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 and then print their documents. They stay connected to the corporate wireless and then sends the document over to corporate traffic. But what had happened is that a software update was pushed to the printers, and when they went through their software update, it actually re-enabled their Wi-Fi radios. So not only is this creating contention on their wireless network, because they was using the 2.4 gigahertz band, 
Also, it was a uh, security vulnerability. So this is why it's important that you do these regular health checks of your environment so you can find out exactly where these devices are. So Mac, how about that multiple AP notes? Okay, so the next one on the list, I will double check it, is the multiple <laughs> AP notes, okay? So that's a massive thing because typically when you want to let your facility guys know where to install access points and how to install them. You want to have a space where you include the picture of the access point where it goes, for example, and the, for example, the information about how to mount it, like suspend the antenna to three meters above the ground using conduit brackets, stuff like that. So if you wanted to do it on a per access point basis, you can, but what if you had like 300 access points that have the same instructions, instead of relying on like Microsoft Word or something to do, uh, to do find and replace, you can have everything done in Eka House. So we have one simple source of truth. So I have selected these APs, uh, for example, the printers, and I don't want to include actually the installation notes there. I just want to include a note that says to remove those printers. So I just right click on any of the selected APs, add note to multiple APs, and I will just say, remove these bad boys, okay? <laughs> and that's everything. I can now use this information, take this note and put it in the report, <coughs> give it to the guys on the ground and they will remove the printers or disable Wi-Fi of those printers. I hope that makes sense. This saves you a tremendous amount of money, okay? That's a brand new thing that we've added recently. Okay, so we have talked about the keyboard shortcuts. We have talked about the channel planner, how you can fix your existing network with number one performance killer, that is the CCI, cross-channel interference, multiple radios operating on the same radio, that's a no-no, okay? Don't do that. You can fix that very quickly. Uh, we've talked about uh, multiple AP nodes that will save you time. And Just the about. next on the list is... is the the wall calibration tool. So I'm not sure if anyone's t tried this feature out inside of Echo AI Pro, but it's amazing. And why do we need to understand the attenuation of the building materials on site? It's so we can create a really accurate predictive model inside of Echo Has anyone here ever done any manual wall attenuation testing before? Yeah, a few hands. I can see a few hands go up. It's very, very, very difficult to see through the light. Okay, but a few people's hands have gone up. So the manual way of you know understanding what the materials are on site currently is that you'd set up your test access point. You would then go on one side of the wall. You would collect some data on one side of the wall for a little while, go on to the other side of the wall, collect some more data. And then what you would do is look at the difference between those data points and that will give you the attenuation value of that wall. And I don't know about you, but that's kind of a manual, long, tedious process to uh, do that. So what Echo has come up with is a brand new feature inside of Echo AI Pro called our wall calibration tool. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is a data collection survey that we've done at the Echo Helsinki office because we can see our survey paths. But what you may, may also notice is that we've drawn our simulated walls. So we have multiple different wall types that have been drawn throughout the, the, uh, the office. So we've got our different types of windows, walls, internal, concrete, drywall, etc., etc. And what we do as Wi-Fi engineers or Wi-Fi pros, we assign attenuation values to those wall types. What we can do now with Echo when you go on site and you collect that data with your Psychic or your Psychic 2, when you draw your simulated walls, we can run what we call our wall calibration tool simply by going to actions and then wall calibration. And then what we're gonna see now is a little window that will pop up. It's gonna tell you every single type of wall that you have drawn inside of your project file. So it starts with the cubicle going all the way down to the thick window. Then it's broken down by the frequency, so 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz. On the left hand side, of the frequency is the attenuation value that you have got assigned for your current wall type. So for example, um, I'm just gonna focus on, on that wall concrete one for now. So you can see here, it says that it's an eight dB attenuation. That's what we have done in our simulation so far. The value on the right hand side is the value that Echohal is telling you, the user, based on the data that you've collected and the walls that you have drawn, this is the value that we think that the attenuation should be. So for the concrete wall where I have drawn an 8 dB attenuation value, Echo has actually detected that it should be 14.5 dBs, which is quite, quite a bit of a change, quite a bit of a difference. And then we have the quality indicator on the right hand side. So where it says 
good. This means that there is enough confidence based on the amount of survey path data that you have collected for Eckhow to make a good judgment based on that wall in particular. Where it, said, where it says uh, not applicable or uh, if it said poor, this would just simply mean that you haven't collected enough data around that particular wall that you want to do. So a tip here is make sure any walls that you're really interested in is that you walk on both sides of the walls to be able to collect that data. And then what you can simply do is just hit apply on any of the values that you wish to um, change your wall attenuation for. Uh, you can do it individually, one by one, or you can simply press apply all, and then it's gonna calibrate and um, do your attenuation values for you. So um, that's the wall calibration tool. And it's really powerful because you don't have to go around and do this one by one anymore now. So you can just go on site, go do your passive survey data collection, draw in your simulated walls after, and then you're ready to create a really accurate predictive model, and you can start placing your simulated access points with the actual measured real-world attenuation in your files. So really powerful, cool feature. Very powerful. So we use it every single, for every single validation slash design. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt. So next on the list, guys, is something that we call a network simulator. And a network simulator is a very interesting feature because how many of you had a chat with your customers or were thinking about your own networks where you have Wi-Fi issues with your existing vendor and then you think, okay, if I change my vendor A to a vendor B, newer access points, more expensive ones, maybe with more radios in, all my problems will be solved. Has anyone, has anyone ever heard that before? Yeah, a few hands going up. I can see, I can see a few smiles on people's faces. We've, we've all been there. It's sometimes hard to convince the customer that they should have a new design, right? Because it's expensive to pay for someone to come and do a new design, run new cables, mount access points. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to see a few people smiling. I think this feature might be especially for you then. Okay, so take a look at this particular project, okay? We are looking at the signal strength, the primary signal strength now. And is it decent? In your opinion, does it, does it work? Most people will be able to connect to Wi-Fi in this office, yes, no? Yes, I can see your heads nodding yes, so they will be able to. Okay, cool, let's take a look at the secondary signal strength. Secondary signal strength from this AP, so let me switch to five gigahertz. It's not as good anymore, right? And we need secondary signal strength for roaming. We need it for the redundancy on the access points level. And now this particular client or network owner can think, okay, I will replace my older Rucus APs with, let's say, newer, I don't know, like Mist APs. Is that going to solve my issues? And instead of having to do it, losing time and money just to realize that it's not going to work with a new access point, because the problem here is not the access point. The problem here is a design. But now we have a tool to prove it. So we have our survey data from the site. Ekahau understands in comp uh, well, both the RF propagation and the antenna pattern from the existing APs, and it can use this information to simulate how would the environment look like if we had replaced these APs with new ones. So it's as simple as just going to actions, network simulator, better, so yeah, uh, use at your own risk, however it works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I select the, the access point that is on site, the current model, and then I want to check if I, for example, choose, you know, beefy new tri-band MIST AP45AP on 20 megahertz because it's like a high-ish density, I would have assumed, is it going to fix my issues? I hit simulate, I confirm that I'm happy with, uh, with the better state of the feature, and after a few moments, there are just multiple flaws there. Now, like how it's crunching for the numbers to show me how would new APs from MIST would look like in this particular environment keeping the same locations. And one thing else to bear in mind here is the current Ruckus model access points, they only support 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So if you were to look at the six gigahertz visualization, you wouldn't see anything there. But the one thing to note is that Mac has chosen to use a new access point that does support six gigahertz. So there is a lot of magic that goes on under the hood with the AI and AI Pro. We don't quite, quite know how they do it, but you're gonna see in a few moments time exactly what it would look like to potentially upgrade to this model of access point, but it will also predict for you what the coverage would look like on six gigahertz based on the measured collected survey data and then cross-referencing looking at the propagation patterns from the two different access points radios that you have. Yep, so look, we are now looking at the visualization of a secondary signal strength at six gigahertz for the new MIST APs. 
if I go back to uh, all my networks, so this is now the Rookus APs, it's empty because there is no six gigahertz in these APs. So let me switch to five. And now look, in five gigahertz secondary signal strength, it's not the best in the world. When I uh, go now to generate at least AP45 view, not much changed, right? So it didn't work, it still doesn't work. So instead of doing it the hard way, you can use this tool to understand that if vendor A doesn't work, vendor B probably won't work either, and you really need to take a step back and do a decent design, okay? So that was the uh, network simulator. Let me outrun the psychic. Next one will be looking at the spectrum analysis colors and what do they mean? So spectrum analysis is looking at all the energy, RF energy, electromagnetic energy in the air, Wi-Fi or not Wi-Fi, BLE, interferers, whatever, you will see all of that in spectrum analyzer tool. And we can see spectrum analysis just like in Ekahau AI Pro. And instead of uh, just clicking. clicking on live, I will hit number four because I know I can. And now we are looking at the <laughs> spectrum data. Not too much. And we've got it, we've got it in Mi Miami Vice Pink at the moment. So um, the Psychic 2 that we've got is connected. It's just under the um, whatever you call this table thing here. Lecture. Lecture. Okay. Uh, it's underneath here for now. We're going to get it out and show you it in a, in a few moments' time when we flip to the uh, survey application. But what we can see here is that we can now see the layer one physical density of energy that is traversing in the air in this environment where we are right now. So we can, the spectrum analyzer in the Psychic 2 does 2.45 and 6 gigahertz. So we can see right now in 2.4 gigahertz, there's, by the looks of things, Quite a lot of Bluetooth happening since Bluetooth BLE advertisements happen just between, uh, just before channel one, just before channel four, and then just after channel 13. So I guess a few people here have some Bluetooth devices on them that's uh, going off right now. Um, so one of the really nice, cool new things in Echo AI Pro that uh, happened in a very recent update is as Mac is moving his mouse and cursor over the spectrum, can you see that it's telling you at the top the exact part of the frequency that you're hovering over right now. And also on the right hand side, it's telling you where the mouse is, is the exact signal strength. So if you're looking on the left hand side, this is telling you the power in uh, DBM, the channels as you go across the uh, spectrum part of it here. And then as he moves along, we are seeing the exact level. So what it means by when you see different colors, if you're looking at the top view, when you see it go, when it's nice, when it's like light green and yellow, that means that there's some traffic happening, but it's not particularly busy. When it goes to being dark orange or even to red, this means that the current channel is very highly utilized. It's being very used at the moment. So perhaps someone's downloading a file, sending some data, and that's what's occupying it to make it look very uh, red. When you look at the waterfall view down here on the bottom part, this is showing us the live spectrum over time. And at the moment it's set for the last two minutes. Um, when you see the different colors here, this is referring to the amplitude, so how loud the signal was uh, in the view above. Uh, I wonder if there's any six gigahertz here, Mac. Shall we check? Why not? Okay. Oh. Nothing. Not yet, <laughs> no six gigahertz in here yet. But we've got the five gigahertz band, which we can see on the previous tab uh, below. I think there is some, some five gigahertz here. And it looks like one of the channels is particularly busy right now. Channel, uh, channel 48 is being used quite a lot. So uh, pretty dark right now. Yeah, so, so guys, one, one more time, it's quite important to understand the darkness of the color in density view, in the view up there, it's the how often was the channel hammered with the energy and the color in the waterfall view is how loud was the amplitude on that frequency band, okay? So that's, that's the colors for you. And the last very important thing, we won't spend too much time on it here, it's a complicated topic, but we'll try to make it easy, is talking about offsets. So what is the offset and why do you want to use offsets in your validation surveys? Let me make it quite simple. So, what device do you use to capture validation survey data? What is it that is capturing all this stuff? Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi spectrum analysis. Is it your tablet? Is it your phone, your computer, or a sidekick? Of course, right? So a sidekick is a purpose-built device. It has nine antennas. It has omnidirectional 360 degrees of measurement pattern. It's really accurate, and every sidekick is pretty much the same. 
Okay, and now, if you are designing your Wi-Fi network, what device do you design it for? Do you design it for a sidekick, or do you design it for your least capable, most important device, like an iPhone in corporate environments, or a barcode scanner in a warehouse? What do you design for? Exactly. So now the sidekick will be more sensitive because it has better quality antenna. So when you take measurements on site, measured with a sidekick, it will all look green, okay, let's say. But then it's very possible that if you take your barcode scanner and see through the eyes of that barcode scanner, the results will be absolutely different. So it will no longer be as green, okay? So let me quickly show you how to, how to do it. And for this, I will use... Uh, Anyone's fine. Okay, cool. So I will use the wall calibration demo because why not? So guys, I'm opening a validation survey. We have done the validation with Echo House Sidekick 2, and that is what we see here. It's all through the eyes of Echo House Sidekick 2. All my networks. Uh, I will disable a piece view so it's a little bit cleaner. I will take a look at just all my networks. So this is the... This is the signal strength, secondary signal strength actually. Let me switch to the primary signal strength. This is the primary signal strength representation from all the access points owned by Ekahau in Helsinki office, okay? Now, let's say that I want to see how a very old barcode scanner would look like in this environment. How would it see this environment? So I just simply go to project and device profiles. I add, let's say, Matt. Uh, iPhone 3GS, okay, <laughs> uh, he likes it a lot. Uh, Max supported bandwidth, okay, two by two, let's say that it's one by one, and let's say that this particular device sees the network with 20 dBs less than a sidekick on 2.4 and 20 dBs less on 5 gigahertz, okay? Let's just assume that for the sake of this comparison. I hit close, and now if I want to Visualize that, I hit command or control button, and then looking at signal strength, we hit in it, okay? Because if you don't know what you're doing, you can break things, but we know what we're doing, so we won't break things. I hit command button, three dots here, and then I can view as, default is measured, so view as sidekick, measured by a sidekick, and I can choose uh, Matt's iPhone 3GS, and that's how his iPhone would see the network, okay? So that's important to use in validations. And how do you check what is the difference between a sidekick and iPhone 3GS? Who here has an iPhone 3GS? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> So basically, you put your sidekick on a desk, you put your iPhone or any device that you are measuring on the desk, and you check the RSSI of both over a period of time, like a minute or something. You average it out, and then you see if sidekick sees it with neg 50, and your barcode scanner sees it with the same radio with neg 60 dBm, then you know that the offset is 10 dBm on that particular band, okay? And that is, my friends, everything that we wanted to talk about when it comes Al to almost, Pro. Almost everything. Of course, he would forget one more thing, wouldn't he, okay? So the last thing that we wanted to show you is a ping. And I know everyone here is network engineers, and you're thinking, oh, you can ping, ping a device and get a response. But actually, you can also ping APs inside of Echo AI Pro. So if you've got lots of access points in your project file and you're trying to specifically locate where that access point is, you can use the ping feature in Echo AI Pro to help you locate an access point. So again, one of the features that I think may have been overlooked and not seen by so many people, when you've got a big, large floor plan, it becomes very difficult to, to find these access points and uh, locate them. So that was the last thing we wanted to show you in Echo AI Pro. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you our mobile applications. So I guess you can take a picture of it or you can come back to it on demand to see the shortcuts for the Echo AI Pro. We'll try we use it all the time and it makes you just faster and more efficient inside the application. I can wave as well, be in the, in the photo. Yeah, like a royal wave. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are now going to show you our Echo survey application. Um, for anyone that's not used the survey application, this is a device that runs on your mobile device. It can be on your iPhone, your iPad. It also runs on your Android device as well. Um, and what we've got here is we've got the floor plan loaded in for the auditorium for where we are right now. What we're going to be using to collect the data is my iPad plus my Psychic 2. And um, 
long, not so long ago, I remember when we used to have to do these uh, validation surveys where we'd have to carry around a laptop and multiple dongles. I would use a connector desk harness, put my laptop on the tray, walk around with the dongles all sticking out, bashing into things, people asking me if I'm ghost busting. My favorite one was when some, some little old lady come up to me in a shopping center when I was walking around doing my validation survey, tapped me on the shoulder, and then as I turned around, she looked extremely disappointed. And I was like, can I, can I help you? And she was like, no, I, I thought you were selling ice creams. And I was like, oh, <laughs> damn, so, I'm really sorry. I can help you have good Wi-Fi, but no ice creams on me today. Fortunately, long gone are those days. And we can now capture data using our lightweight mobile devices. It's much better for you, for your backs, for being more mobile and collecting the data. So how do we collect the data? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across to the survey tab, which we see um, at the top up here. And then we have a few different ways that we can collect the data. In this version of the iPads, I haven't got the cellular version. We don't see the GPS option, but if you did have a SIM card inside your device, you can use GPS. Then we have three versions that we can see here right now. The stop and go method, where you just tap on the map where you are, it'll count down for five seconds. You just stay still, collect the data, you move on to the next place, you tap, wait, collect the data. The thing is with stop and go is that as you're moving between those reference points, you're actually throwing away data. So you're not constantly collecting information. So it's not our preferred go-to method for collecting data. Our next option is the continuous option, which is where you're constantly tapping on the map, Ted and Ekehau, where you start, when you turn, when you stop, when you start, when you turn, when you stop. So you're constantly tapping on where you are, which I think for many, many how users, this is your preferred method that you've been doing for many, many years that you're comfortable with. But the thing that I want to show you is the autopilot survey. And autopilot is by far our favorite. It's the most fastest, most fun, and most accurate way of doing it. But it's very difficult, isn't it? Apparently so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and show it to you live. Like I said, what can go wrong in a live demo? We'll, hopefully we won't find out today. But what autopilot is going to do is going to be leveraging the AR kit inside of your iOS device. So it looks at your camera, gyroscope, and if you've got LiDAR capabilities. A couple of tips to have very accurate autopilot surveys is you need to make sure that the floor plan that you've brought into the application is accurately scaled. So I came in here earlier, I scaled between two walls using a laser measure tool, so it's completely accurate. And then a couple of other tips that you need to do is when you first give it the reference point, you tap on the map to tell, you, tell Ekeha where you are. What I see a lot of people do is they tap and then they walk straight away. But what it actually tells you is it's to wait for a moment. So you tap where you are, you wait, and then it's going to tell you, start moving, I'm recording your live location. And then you move to the next location where you can use as a reference point and then you tap again. So that's another tip. Final tip is make sure you use something that is actually definitely physically there in the environment. So sometimes you might have market stands that pop up in the area and you, they're not 100% there. So what we look for is anything that we know is definitely there and in the environment. So for me, I can see on the stage, I can see where the stairs are. So I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna use from one part of the stairs to the next part of the stairs, and then let's see how well it works. Everyone cross your fingers for me. So I'm just down here. Hello, Duncan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap once using my pencil right where I am, and I'm stood just here. So I tap. And that's the location of our iPad. And it says, getting ready, please hold on. Now move and set your location. I'm gonna walk over here and I'm going to just tap one more time. And now I'm just completely hands-free. Hello everyone. And I can just move around. And now as I move around, I no longer need to tap my iPad screen. I can just move. It's gonna automatically update my path for me. Now this is a real skill to not trip up as I, as I do this. And I can just move around and I'm completely hands-free not touching the iPad, just moving around, and my live location is being updated for me as I move around. And by the way, guys, in your real environments, you don't have stairs with lights and dark rooms, so it will work even better if you click accurately, okay? So this initial calibration is very important, so do it accurately. Zoom in and do it accurately. Now, I mean, is no one impressed by that? That's pretty cool, right? Come on, come on. I can't, take any, I can't take any credit. And the other thing is that um, you'd be thinking, come on, Matt, you've been working in Wi-Fi for so many years. You work at Ekehal. Of course you make it look easy. So, never done this before. First time ever. Who here has never used Ekehal? 
Put your hand up. Okay. Two people. <laughs> so who here, keep your hand up, who here has never used Eckerhau and is willing to come up here and try and do an autopilot survey live? Did anyone keep their hands up? Come up, my friend, sitting next to Mr. Dan Jones. Come up. Okay. Hi. What's your name? Jiri. How do you? Jiri. How's it going, my friend? I'm up. You're right. To Dubai. <laughs> okay. Just hold my iPad for a second, please. Of course. I'm just going to give you the psychic. If you wouldn't mind putting it on. That's what I always saw on the video and stuff, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's uh, the one. It really is easy. Okay. There you go. So, okay, one, one second. So, everyone, we, we've, got, we've got Jiri up here with us. Right now, we can still see we can still see the screen, and I'm gonna just give Jiri some simple instructions. He can just repeat. You don't, don't need don't worry about going up the stairs. Let's just see if he can set up the autopilot survey and, and get it working as well. Okay, I've not slipped in twenty pound before he came in here or anything. This is genuine first time we're doing this. Okay, so the um, first thing we're gonna do is we need to find somewhere that we can use as a reference point. So you see, I use the stairs over here. So don't tap yet. Um, what we'll do is we'll just go to that location. If you want to just come come down. It's calm. Calm down. Okay, I will stand with you. So I like to use the pencil, but so what we're going to do is that we're kind of stood right here right now. So when you tap here, you just wait for a second. Yeah, that's yeah, we it. Are here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we we've, we've tapped already, so let's just back that up. Yes. So one second. So we're kind of just going to be in line with this here, which is just like this. Yeah, just that line. So you're going to tap. Here. Yep. Yeah. Now just wait. And then come across to the next location over here. And when we get in line with this part of the stairs here, if you wouldn't mind just tapping in that location again, just here. Yep. A little bit to the right. There, just, that's it. And then now just have a little walk around. Just walk around the stage. Hey. It's watching, watching you. And there we go. So be careful going up the stairs, don't trip. So that's it, and then you just hit, just hit end, <laughs> and that's it, okay? So that is how simple it can be to collect the data using the autopilot survey feature inside of the yeah, iPad. Yeah, very nice. I like it. Okay, of course, he likes it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later then. <laughs> can everyone just please join me in giving Jiri a huge round of applause? Cause Thank you very much. Thank you. Also. Okay, chap. So that was that was the autopilot, and this is really a mind-blowing stuff. But the next very important feature, and the reason, another reason why we prefer to use mobile devices, is the ability to add some pictures. Okay, so you go to the site and you want to capture as much information as you can without having to switch between applications, right? So you want to understand how are your ceilings looking, how how high they are. Maybe you have some restricted ceilings and you want to take a picture of it and then mark it red with your pencil. Or maybe you want to grab a picture of the access point saying this AP is mounted wrongly. We need to do something about it after the survey. So that's another amazing thing that you can do. And Matthew is just like taking a picture of you, my beautiful people here with his, you know, brand new iPad. And now he can like scribble on it. Matthew, but just don't be dirty. Scribble nice things. Okay, that's nice. Oh. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a problem, hey? Yes. And guys, this is really powerful and you want to use it all the time. Okay? Yeah. Try to do it with a laptop. It's not as easy. Yeah, so su super nice, super easy to use the uh, survey application. Let's say you want to apply a different color to, to one of the access points. Maybe you want to make it stand out or use it later on for filtering and things like that. You can do it all directly from the application. Um, it's really powerful, really cool, really simple to use. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. One other thing as well is that we, really, we are a real big believer of not having to take too much equipment on site with us. And we genuinely feel that you can just take your iPad on site with you to do your validation surveys. So one of the things you you might be thinking of is, oh, I've uploaded the floor plan, I've synced it to Echo Insights, but what if I've not got the correct scale? 
you can actually change the scale, which is, I did this earlier in the application here, is when you click on this uh, bottom left-hand corner signal stream, and then you click on these three dots, I can change the scale and the map name, and this is where I could, you know, grab these blue icons and, you know, change the scale up here. So you can do everything from the survey application. So once you hit back, it automatically syncs to the Echo Insights cloud, or if you're concerned about putting stuff in the cloud, you can save directly to the hard drive of the Psychic. So I think that was everything we wanted to show with yes. the survey app. So guys, just like what you've seen so far, you've seen like how AI Pro, that is a software that does everything. Now you have seen the mobile application called the Echo House Survey. As the name suggests, this application is to do an on-site survey, okay? And it, can, it works on Apple devices, Android devices, does not matter. However, if you want to use autopilot, you need to have access to AR Kit. So that's Apple only. Everything else, it doesn't matter. And now we are about to show you the third type of application that is the on-the-spot wireless network scanning tool. And if you have, for example, issues with your existing network, you do a survey, and everything looks great, you still, it still doesn't perform too well, then you do this, okay? Then you stand where you have a problem and you dig deeper. And now what the sidekick is doing, what the Echo Hub Analyzer is doing, it is checking out the beacons and it passes this information in a way that is more digestible and easier for you to interpret and find the problem with your Wi-Fi network. Um, and uh, we're trusting you with our lives here because we're showing you something that isn't actually officially live or launched yet. You might, you might keep see it, for it the last. but we'll save it, we'll save it till last to show you what it is. Okay, so for now guys, so let's take a look at the newest, latest and greatest thing that we have, almost. It's the I can show you the spectrum. So again, you can turn your mobile device into a really uh, powerful high resolution spectrum analyzer. So maybe you need to track down some non Wi Fi interference. Perhaps there's some uh, wireless video cameras, some lots of Bluetooth devices. Perhaps there's a passive infrared. But check, check it, change it to vanilla eyes or the Miami Vice. Yeah, so you can have a change of the color scheme if you don't like to use the traditional yellow and red. Perhaps you like the Miami Vice color scheme. You can change it to there. So really cool that in your power of the, your mobile device, you can see such a powerful, fast, high resolution spectrum analyzer. Um, but the app that gets max excitement levels through the roof is one, one of our new features called the network. Just click it, click it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, look, look, at, look, at, look at that view. It's like, just by looking at it, you can already say what might be wrong with the network, okay? I will just stand here because I have access to the cursor. So look at that, we have Barbican event, RSSI, amazing, basic rates, 24 megs. So this is not one, this is not two, this is not six. This is 24, so our management and control overhead won't be as high, which is good. WP2PSK, that's fine. Management frame protection not enabled, so we won't have compatibility issues. Amendments enabled, KRNV, we probably don't need R, which is fast transition for PSK-based network. We are diving a little bit deep there, but I can just say that I would probably disable that if I had some compatibility issues on that particular network channel that we use, and then very important things, last three columns, look at that. Utilization, BSS utilization, and STA, stands for stations. Utilization is the physical spectrum utilization that comes from the sidekick, and that shows you Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi, everything else, like utilization on channel 44. BSS utilization, this is similar information, it's logical, not only physical. This comes from the access point in a beacon, in BSS field of a beacon. Amazing two things to have, because if you have massive disparity, like let's say here, 20 versus 26, it might tell you that you have retransmissions in your network. If you don't have a massive disparity, I, I wouldn't call it massive, by the way, this is like, this looks like a good Wi-Fi traffic, so physical utilization and logical utilization, they are very similar, meaning that we have tons of good Wi-Fi traffic with not too many retransmissions. And now we have just seven stations associated on five gigahertz network, so we appreciate that the password was a secret. <laughs> we appreciate that one hour from now we'll have more devices associated to this Wi-Fi network. And here's everything that we are parsing from beacons with the benefit being you don't have to really dive deep into multiple different fields in Wireshark, for example. You can just open up Analyzer, connect to Sidekick 2, and you have access to it live. And this is extremely powerful, my friends. So combining the serve, uh, Echo Hell AI Pro... Beyond my abilities at the moment. That is definitely beyond his abilities. I can, I can guarantee that. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, 
the power of Echo AI Pro, the, our desktop application that runs on Windows and Mac OS, plus the survey application to capture the data and the analyzer application that turns your mobile device into a troubleshooting powerhouse, if this isn't enough, which sometimes you do need to see in a bit more detail what is happening across your wireless network, well, what is it that you need to do sometimes? Someone tell me. If you're troubleshooting a really particular problem, uh, you've looked at all of the information, the heat maps, and you check the wireless scanning features, what would you do next if you still hadn't solved the problem? Packet capture. Packet capture, okay. So, wouldn't it be, what's one of the hardest things to do when you're doing a packet capture, especially if you're trying to capture a roaming event? Capture on two channels at once. So yeah, that would be really difficult. What if you could capture on four channels at once? Would that oh. be... <laughs> I did give him 20 pounds before this, this started. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a feature that's not officially live out in Analyzer application, but it's coming extremely soon. And we have packet capture capability now in the Analyzer application with your Psychic 2. It will work with your Psychic 1, but that will capture on two Wi-Fi radios simultaneously at the same time. But our Psychic 2 can capture on four radios at the same time on 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. All we need to do simply is to select the channels that you want to capture on. So uh, who remembers what channels we're broadcasting? 44, was it? 44. No, nothing on 6 gigahertz, right? But you know, if you wanted to capture on 6 gig, you would just, just select that here. And then you simply, you just hit capture. It takes a, a moment's time to initiate, initial, initializing the capture. Um, and what it's gonna do is gonna start capturing on all of those channels at the same time. And once you've captured, I don't know, enough data that you're happy with, and you think you've captured the issue or the problem that you're trying to solve, um, then you, you are able to easily share that from your device to your uh, laptop. So it's the typical way that you would share with um, any other application that you use on iOS. So uh, let's say, for example, you're trying to share a photo, you're trying to share a document, um, you'll see here. So now it's initialized, it's capturing packets, it's telling you the amount of time that it's captured the packets for. So uh, I'll just give it a few more seconds. Did we say we was going to give a loud shit, a, a round of applause? So we hit, we hit stop and then, oh dear, it's crashed. <laughs> There's a problem with, with, with beta, but you see it, it's there, and then you would just share it to your, to your laptop, and then you can open that, that PCAP on, on your laptop. I know you won't believe us, but this is the first time it crashed on us. Yeah, <laughs> of course, what, yeah, but it, that's fine. This is a, the beta version of the app. It, it's going to be live very, very soon, but I wanted to show you that's how easy it's going to be for you to do it, and then you share it to, um, you just simply share it to your device. Okay, I've got to log in again. Okay. Find login, but that's that's the survey application analyzer app. We're just going to finish and show you very quickly the Echohow insights. Cool. Stop sharing, mate. I will. And yeah. Let's smash it. Okay. So let's open up Chrome and then Insights. So we are already logged into Echohow Insights, guys. This is like the cloud representation of all your projects that you have, validations and designs, and you can collaborate with your teammates. You can even do a design or do a validation, grab these pictures, uh, grab the picture notes, uh, point out issues with your network, and then you can even use that as a reporting tool to share it with your customer that might not have Ekahow license. It's as easy, it's that easy, okay? So let's first open up a project. The project will be on second page. the second page. Uh, warehouse, warehouse. Warehouse demo, oh, yes. warehouse, warehouse. I'm just making sure he's picking the right file I prepared for this. <laughs> warehouse, warehouse. Okay, guys, so you can see that we have like a typical standard uh, this is simulated AP. So that is a design, not a validation. And what if I wanted to share it with someone? It's as simple as just hitting the share and guest access link. Not many people know about it, but you don't need to have a license to share this stuff. I copy it and then I go into incognito mode. Okay. In incognito mode up in. And when I paste it, I will have access. I'm not logged in to anything, but now I have access to the same project that I'm just looking at in a logged in tab. So that's very, very 
Powerful. APs. Click on AP. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to show you that the, the Echo Insights is getting way more uh, interactive and you can see lots of different heat map visualizations. You can interact with individual access points. What Mac was saying earlier about the power of um, being able to uh, add notes to your access points, it doesn't just have to be your validations, it can be also for your design. So what we've done here is we've added some notes, uh, a, a, an example of how you would install one of those Axel Text antennas. If you've not spoken to the Axel Text guys and girls, they're outside, uh, go and talk to them uh, about using some external external antennas because when you're using warehouse, doing warehouse designs, you definitely want to use external antennas for the racks and stuff. Um, but you can see lots of different uh, examples here. You can add commentary, notes, pictures, highlight things, which is really helpful. And one of the things that we do is when we're do working on projects for customers is that, you know, a way that we can do reporting now is, you know, send an exec summary to them in an email. But if you just share the guest access link with the user, they can then click around and interact with the map. They'll be able to see all of the comments, where they should be able to mount the access points, the inventory. So how many access points you've used, what make, what model, how many external antennas, et cetera, et cetera. This is big, like the inventory is quite cool, okay? No longer you need to do it manually. It will calculate everything for you, yeah. saving you time, big time. Yeah. Okay? So that is... Okay. <laughs> it's, all going, it's, all going, it's all going well so far. Okay, you should share the uh, thing for a second. I love packet capture because it's working now. And I'll, I'll sign in. Packet this, capture is working. That's what Matthew you, is saying. Can you believe uh, just the share option, not that, just show how to share. So... I was just going to take over my screen. Oh. <laughs> this happened to me uh, at the last Wi-Fi conference that we was presenting at. I got kicked out. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's me. Well done logging in. Uh, well, I had to change my password as well yesterday, and I can't use any previous four passwords. I mean, that was a tough decision to come up with the uh, come up with the right one. Um, so the, the last thing I just wanted to show you to come back to the analyzer app for one second, um, very quickly. Uh, here we go. Uh, so where, when you've done your packet captures, you'll see them in, in the file down, uh, the options down here. So you can see the 2nd of March one. All I would simply do is click the share and I can select my uh, Mabit Pro to drop it, airdrop it to if you, if you want to. So that's just the last thing, just to round, round that off. And then now we are pretty much... Yeah, I know. It was my most popular contact, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, chap. so that was the Wi-Fi stuff from Ekahau. This is a new toy that we can use. We have Ekahau Private 5G Planner. So if you think beyond Wi-Fi, you can also do it with Ekahau. And it's not just 5G. It's the cellular, it's tons of IoT technologies available for us to use Ekahau to plan for as well. And now, Matthew, what is that? I don't know, is that light that we can see at the end of the tunnel in this very dark presentation? Let's take a look. Yeah. Is, oh. Has anyone seen this before? No, you haven't. So this is going to be coming extremely soon as well to Echo AI Pro. Light mode is coming very soon. I don't, people here like light mode? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, our preference is dark mode, but light mode. We wanted to show you a concept that is coming very soon, so if you've not seen it, uh, this is what Echo AI Pro would look like when it's got the light mode feature as well. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that is That's the end it. of our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to us. 52 minutes.